On Tuesday, Variety released its new cover. Looks like this. It's a picture of Hamilton's Brandon Victor Dixon. Yes, the guy who lectured Mike Pence while Pence was enjoying a night out with the wife. HBO's Lena Dunham, Michael Moore, Chelsea Handler, and CNN's Van Jones. They're all holding a large American flag, looking upset and somber, as you can see. Dunham wears a shirt that says, Women are powerful and dangerous, as she seems to hide behind the aging large Moore. Handler wears a shirt reading, Let's get to work. Now what? On the eve of Trump's inauguration, Hollywood and the media raise their voices, says the headline. Well, here's what. Please keep doing this, Hollywood celebrities. It will ensure that you continue to lose. First off, we should never be lectured by the likes of Lena Dunham, a self-described sexual abuser of her own sister, or Michael Moore, the guy who does propaganda about the glories of Cuba's health care. But more than that, Hollywood seems completely oblivious to the fact that their shrill hysteria over Trump's election actually drives Americans into Trump's camp. It's all obnoxious and overwrought. Here are just a few of the latest Hollywood idiot stories. First, the near octogenarian members of Green Day have released a new song tearing into Donald Trump, cobbling together footage of KKK rallies with Trump talking. Billy Joe Armstrong, 44, warbles, a new day dawning comes without warning, so don't think twice, we live in troubled times. Ooh. Meanwhile, Joss Whedon, the guy behind the mediocre Avengers flicks, jokes about Paul Ryan being raped to death by a rhinoceros. Nicole Kidman had the temerity to say that the president ought to be given a baseline level of support, and Whedon then tweeted out that she was a, quote, puppet for Trump. Broadway's Jennifer Holliday, she was forced out of singing at the inauguration due to death threats. Too bad she didn't lecture Mike Pence at a show or anything, then she'd be a hero. Holliday wasn't the only one ousted from the inauguration over death threats, so is Andrea Bocelli. Steve Harvey, well, he was labeled a mediocre Negro by Mark Lamont Hill for meeting with Trump over any inner city community development. And then Hollywood wonders why Americans don't take them seriously on politics. Here's the truth. At least half of Americans feel scorned by Hollywood, and they should, because Hollywood scorns them. When I researched my book, Primetime Propaganda, I spoke with the top creators in Hollywood history. They thought I was a leftist, so they freely admitted to discriminating against conservatives in Hollywood and picturing middle middle Americans as rubes and racists and treating their shows as propaganda outlets for their viewpoints. No wonder Americans just get sick when they see covers like the one from Variety. Michael Moore posing with the flag. Is it the same guy who said that Trump supporters are legal terrorists, but actual terrorists are Minutemen? That makes most Americans queasy. Treating Lena Dunham like a moral voice, despite her ardent love for abortion and her overt bragging about masturbating next to her 11-year-old sister in bed, yeah, that sort of nauseates Americans, too. Acting as though Chelsea Handler, a woman who said she should be applauded for her two abortions as a beacon of light, that's pretty disgusting. So, Hollywood, keep it coming. Nothing drives Americans away from leftism, quite like the specter of uber-rich, uber-famous, uber-immoral leftists treating them as dreck to be scraped from their shoes. It worked so well for Hillary Clinton, she's creeping around the woods of Chappaqua as Donald Trump becomes the 45th president of the United States. I'm Ben Shapiro. This is The Ben Shapiro Show. Yes, we have tons to get to, as always, today. Very exciting show planned for you with a lot of deconstructing of culture coming up near the end, a lot of race talk, lots of stuff going on. But first, we have to say thank you to one of our great sponsors, Birch Gold. So if you're interested in investing in precious metals, then Birch Gold is the way to do it. Birch Gold Group has a long-standing track record of continued success. They have lots of five-star reviews. They have an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. And they have a free information kit on how you can invest in physical precious metals. So it's not just, you know, them sending you, like, a a stock. It's actual physical precious metals. And they have a 16-page comprehensive kit that tells you how to do this, how to protect your savings, how you can move your money out of your IRA or 401k into precious metals uh, without tax consequences. They are the experts at this. Birchgold.com is how to get in touch. Birchgold.com. Com slash ben. And if you're concerned about the future of the economy, and who wouldn't be considering how volatile the economy is and will continue to be, uh, you need to have at least part of your portfolio in precious metals. Birch Gold can help you do that. Ask all your questions at birchgold.com slash ben, birchgold.com slash ben, and then they're the people I would trust to invest in precious metals. Okay, so lots going on. We begin today with the continued racial fallout over Donald Trump's inauguration. So the left has to turn everything into a racial issue. It's, it's just imperative for them to do so. And so they continue to trot forward John Lewis, the, the congressman from Georgia and the civil rights hero, to claim that Donald Trump is not really legit. It turns out, and by the way, that John Lewis actually, this is the second inauguration he's boycotting. He also boycotted George W. Bush's inauguration. Uh, is it possible that John Lewis is doing this not because he thinks that Trump is illegitimate, but because he's a leftist and Trump is apparently not? Uh, yeah, that's that's probable. Here's John Lewis uh, explaining not why he's boycotting Trump, but why he loves Obama. 
No one, no one since Martin Luther King Jr. had inspired me the way that Barack Obama inspired me. Okay, so if you think that, then is it any wonder that you want to dump Trump on the side of the road? Is that any shock? And you can see that there is a racial component to a lot of the people who are who hate Trump. And it's not just because Trump is white or anything, but what the, the attempt by the left is to polarize Americans along racial lines. Like Hillary was white, too. Presumably they wouldn't have boycotted her inauguration. But there is an attempt to boycott Trump because they're trying to draw racial lines. They're trying to say, a lot of members of the left black community, they're trying to say that the only legitimate black people are the people who will stand up against Trump and who will not offer him any sort of support or even the or even the possibility of support in the future. Maxine Waters, who is a nutcase congresswoman from out here in California, she's the one who dubbed the L.A. riots the L.A. uprising. Uh, she's wildly incompetent. She is extraordinarily radical on racial matters. She says that Trump should be impeached preemptively. Well, here's what I'm trying to get to. If we discover that Donald Trump or his advocates played a role in helping to devise strategy, if they're the ones who came up with crooked Hillary, if they're the ones who came up with she's ill, something's wrong with her energy, and the way that he uh, basically, you know, described her in the campaign, I think that is something that would Put the question squarely on the table whether or not he should be impeached. Okay, so she's talking about impeachment, and she's not the only one. A lot of Democrats are very upset. A lot of them are getting ready for trouble. Al Sharpton, who is one of the world's great race baiters, a man who was involved in the incitement of riots against Orthodox Jews in Crown Heights in 1991, was involved in incitement of riots against something called Freddy's Fashion Mart that ended with the death of several people in an arson. Uh, Al Sharpton is, is still seen by the left as some sort of racial conciliator, even though he has spent his entire career smearing people falsely with race charges. And now Sharpton is using his platform, whatever is left of it, uh, to, to rip on Trump and suggest that he is not a legitimate president either. I think that there's no question that the process that elected him was not legitimate. When you look at the now evidence from the intelligence agencies that there was the influence from the Russians and involved in the public discourse at the time of the election, when you look at those that were expunged from being able to vote, clearly the process has a serious questions about it. Okay, so you got Al Sharpton doing this routine. Now, there are some black folks who have met with Trump and have come away saying some relatively nice things about Trump. So Steve Harvey met with Trump. Trump is doing a smart thing. He's inviting a lot of high-profile black folks to the Trump Tower to try and reach out and make overtures and suggest that he's going to make life better for black Americans, not just white Americans who voted for him in the last election cycle. And Jim Brown, of course, came out after meeting with Donald Trump, and he said, listen, Trump won fair, of, fair and square, and I'm going to support him as president of the United States so long as I can. Here's Jim Brown, uh, who met with Trump. Well, I'll tell you, when you win against all odds and you uh, defeat those who were against you and I was for Hillary so I'm one of those who Mr. Trump defeated but he is the president-elect of the United States I'm a citizen I'm not asking him to do everything I'm gonna pitch in and do some of the things that I can do with the like-minded people that I represent and, uh, and he's in, you know, so there's his perspective. Stephen A. Smith has said something similar, says just because you're giving Donald Trump a chance doesn't mean that you're doing anything racially wrong. When noted comedian and host of the hit show Family Feud, Steve Harvey, exited from a meeting with President-elect Donald Trump last week, calling him, quote, a great man, end quote, to say there was a backlash would be a gross understatement. The word cool and sellout was immediately thrown out. His friend and contemporary D.L. Hughley wasn't happy either, aiming his vitriol at Trump instead of Steve Harvey. And of course, it provided the perfect excuse for naysayers to accuse sports greats like Jim Brown and Ray Lewis of being used as photo ops weeks ago. But on a day like today, when we celebrate the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., along with his undeniable historical impact, perhaps it's time for all of us to see the big picture to essentially pay more attention to the issues permeating our society, what it'll take to resolve them, and connecting ourselves to who we ultimately can hold accountable, rather than focusing on disdain for that very individual in a position to make a difference, knowing that's not about to get us anywhere. So there are a lot of people who hate Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith actually will speak truth on racial matters far more often than a lot of his compatriots on ESPN. So there's, there's a small cadre of of high-profile black figures who have met with Trump, and this is driving the left 
baddie, just is driving them up a wall. Mark Lamont Hill, uh, he's a frequent guest on Fox News, on CNN all the time, and he's also a professor at Morehouse College, and he was in a debate about Steve Harvey visiting Trump Tower uh, with a member of the of the sort of Trump team. The person he's talking to here uh, is, is a fellow named uh, Bruce Lavelle, I guess, and he's the National Diversity Coalition for Trump Director. Uh, Bruce Lavelle, that's the, the black guy who you will see second from the left there. I think that's Gemma Green, and I can't remember the name of the, uh, the, the anchor here. In any case, the, the only two who matter for this particular conversation uh, are the two on the on the right hand side of your screen uh, and that would be Mark Lamont Hill and uh, and Bruce Lavelle and here is them going at it over the fact that Steve Harvey met with Trump it, it, it was Listen, a bunch of mediocre when, Negroes being dragged in front of TV as a photo op for Donald Trump's exploitative campaign against black people and you Mark. are Okay, I, how just, are you gonna? So now you want to name call, Mark? No, you better I, jump I, in. Yes, you this is, this now you want to? Now you want to name call? Name <laughs> now you want to name? <laughs> Okay, so he calls them, if you missed it, because it was pretty quick there, he calls them mediocre Negroes. And that's what Mark Lamont Hill says there. So here's how this conversation actually went. What happened is that Hill talked about people like Steve Harvey and Jim Brown. He said, to keep bringing comedians and actors and athletes to represent black interests is demeaning. It's disrespectful. It's condescending. Bring some people up there with some expertise, Donald Trump. Don't just bring up people to entertain. And so Bruce Lavelle said, well, you don't even know what they talked about. And Hill said, well, unless Steve Harvey turned into a policy analyst in the behind the scenes meeting, it doesn't matter whether I was there. My concern is the people he's trumpeting up and putting in front of the cameras. And then after Lavelle said that that was silly, Hill exploded. He said, it's a bunch of mediocre Negroes being dragged in front of TV as a photo op for Donald Trump's exploitative campaign against black people. And you are a prime example of that. So Bruce Lavelle is a prime example of a mediocre Negro being dragged in front of TV as a photo op for Donald Trump's exploitative campaign against black people. So a few points to be made on this. Number one, people on the left do not get to complain about Donald Trump meeting with celebrities on political matters. They don't, okay? Hillary's entire campaign was built around celebrities. We showed you that picture from Variety. We can bring that up again. Half the people on this cover were openly campaigning for Hillary Clinton, right? Lena Dunham was openly campaigning for Hillary Clinton. Chelsea Handler was openly campaigning for Hillary Clinton. Michael Moore was a Hillary Clinton fan, even though he was more of a Bernie Sanders guy. The, the, the fellow Dixon uh, over here, I believe he campaigned for Hillary Clinton. No problem there for the left. That's totally fine. Right. Celebrities campaigning for Democrats, that's totally fine. And, you know, you have Lamont Hill saying that it's just terrible that Trump would meet with all of these black celebrities to push his particular agenda for inner cities. Leonardo DiCaprio was was invited to the White House by Barack Obama to discuss global warming just back in October. Angelina Jolie came to the White House and talked with Obama about Sarajevo. Angelina Jolie, like the Tomb Raider person. Right. Brad Pitt. At the same time that she was meeting with, uh, with, with President Obama, Brad Pitt was talking with Vice President Biden about New Orleans rebuilding. Brad Pitt about New Orleans. Because I guess one time he'd been to New Orleans? No, no one really understands. Okay, during the 2008, Obama actually sought advice on the Middle East from George Clooney. Yes, George Clooney, the guy from Syriana and, and Tomorrowland. Right? And Mark Lamont Hill obviously had no problem with Meryl Streep ripping on Trump. It's also worth noting, by the way, Martin Luther King, during the, during the March on Washington, he reached out to tons of celebrities. Joseph Mankiewicz and Charlton Heston and James Baldwin and Paul Newman and Jackie Robinson and Joan Baez and Bob Dylan and Sammy Davis Jr. and Harry Belafonte and Ruby Dee and Burt Lancaster. If you look at the pictures, it was all celebrities, tons of celebrities. There were some in Selma, many in the March on Washington, and the left was fine with that. So let's not pretend that suddenly they've erected this barrier between celebrity and politics. That's absolute nonsense. The reason Lamont Hill is really pissed is because for the left, the left is the, the entire kind of moral superiority, unearned moral superiority of the left is based on the unsupportable, unsubstantiated belief that they are the sole representatives of minority interests in America, that they stand up for these discrete and insular minorities against the evil American system. And so when there are black people who say, well, you don't stand for me, then they've got a problem because it sort of undermines their own identity. Well, if they can't, re if they can't represent all black people, then what exactly are they representing? What do they stand for? What if, what if a lot of black people say, well, we don't need your, your help. We're fine. America's a good place. We hope that Trump does well. Well, then they get very, very upset and they get to call people mediocre Negroes. It's funny. Mark Lamont Hill once said that black people are incapable of racism because they don't have the institutional power in order to in order to be responsible for racism. Well, Mark Lamont Hill certainly has the institutional power to be racist against Steve Harvey. You know, race is not politics. 
race is not politics. Just because you're white doesn't mean that you vote because you're white according to white interests. Just because you're black doesn't mean that you vote because you're black according to black interests. Sometimes people say, well, if you're Jewish, you're expected to be pro-Israel. Right, because Judaism is an actual religion. Right? Your, your ethnicity is not important to me. Your actual religious practice is. The same thing is not true of your color. Your color, your birthplace, none of that matters when it comes to politics, but the left has to insist that all of that matters when it comes to politics, and so they have to cast out all traitors from the hall. And that means that, obviously, people like Jim Brown and, and Steve Harvey, they have to be thrown aside because Mark Lamont Hill thinks they're mediocre Negroes. Never mind that Steve Harvey, by the way, has an audience of 4 million people on his radio show every day and is worth about $100 million. He's a mediocre Negro. He's a mediocre Negro, as opposed to Mark Lamont Hill, who snipes at him on CNN. Really quite disgusting. And, and racially charged. And we'll get to more of that in just a second. But first, we have to direct your attention to another podcast that you should subscribe to right now on iTunes or Stitcher or Wondery.com, wherever you listen to podcasts. And that podcast is called Terms. Okay, so this is a drama podcast. That's, that's what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a podcast that's fictional, uh, and it's really entertaining. I've listened to it. Really exciting, really entertaining. It's a political podcast, sort of a political thriller, really well produced and interesting to listen to. The basic premise is this. We voted in, America votes in a really controversial president, and the two-term exiting president decides that he wants to do something to stop this guy from taking office. And what ensues from there is really fascinating it's constitutional crisis, the sort of manipulation that goes on behind the scenes. As somebody who loves politics and as somebody who also loves political fiction, Terms is a great piece of work, and you should definitely take a listen. You can subscribe again at iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to the podcasts. Uh, it really is quite addictive. So they bring out these new episodes every Monday, um, and so you can listen to it every Monday as the episodes drop. They've got some back episodes, obviously, available, and you can listen to those and catch up. So iTunes, Stitcher, Wondery, or wherever you listen to podcasts, check it out right now and make sure that you subscribe. Okay, so the Republicans react to all of this, all of this sort of race baiting uh, in the way that you would imagine they would react. Sean Spicer of the RNC, he comes out, he says, look, John Lewis started all of this. You know, all of the left is very upset that Trump is attacking John Lewis. John Lewis is the one who dropped the, the bomb here. It wasn't Trump. Let's talk about the latest battle um, we've just been reporting on between the president-elect and Congressman John Lewis, the president-elect attacking John Lewis's district, his service to this country. We're looking at four days uh, to the run-up of the inauguration. Was this the proper way to handle this for the president-elect? Tamron, I, I, I want to just take it back a step, Tamron, because I think, you know, Congressman Lewis started this with your own Chuck Todd by saying that the election was illegitimate and that President-elect Trump was an illegitimate president. So let's see where it started, which is you have this icon of voting and civil rights claiming that an election was illegitimate when there is zero evidence of that. Everybody has confirmed that the election was duly held, there was no tampering with anything. And to see somebody of John Lewis's stature, an iconic nature who has worked so hard to enfranchise people and talk about the, getting people involved in our voting systems and, 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 getting, and talking about the integrity of our voting system, to then go out when the candidate of his choice doesn't win and try to talk about the delegitimization of the election is frankly <laughs> disappointing. Okay, and Sean Spicer is exactly right. Now in a second, we're going to have to break here on Facebook and YouTube. But in a second, we're going to talk about why Sean Spicer and Trump actually gets it right, why Trump is popular with Republicans, and why Marco Rubio actually gets it wrong on John Lewis and Trump, which is something that is, you know, not something I usually say. Usually in a fight between Trump and Rubio, I'm going to be on Rubio's side. On this one, I think that Rubio is incorrect. We'll talk about all of that over at dailywire.com. Go over to dailywire.com, become a subscriber, $8 a month. If you're an annual subscriber, you still get a free signed copy of my book, True Allegiance. So go over and check it out now. We have a Shapiro store that's going to be coming shortly. We're going to have new goodies. I think we're going to start adding those next week at dailywire.com for our subscribers. Plus, you can watch the rest of us live. You can watch Clavin live. You can become part of the mailbag, which we do on Thursdays. And as I say, lots more goodies coming for subscribers. Dailywire.com to subscribe. Also, listen to us and subscribe to our show at iTunes or SoundCloud. And you can listen to us every day. Make sure that you post a review over at iTunes. Tell them how wonderful we are, because if you listen, you know that we are. We are the best. So make sure that you check it out. We are the biggest conservative podcast in the United States.